Hey Maker, welcome to the Snapseed Photo Editing for Product Photography six part video series. This is video three. This six part video series focuses on the 2025 updated iOS version of Snapseed. So if you missed any of the previous videos, you can grab a link for the entire series playlist in the description below this video. If this is your first time joining me, hey, I'm Christina Nicole product photography coach for makers. So in this video, you're going to learn all about non-destructive editing and edit stacks. So non-destructive editing allows you to make changes to an image without overriding the original image data. This is super important because you can revert the image back to its original, or it allows you to reopen an image that you've already edited and adjust the edits if you need to make some changes. So edit stacks are just like layers in a pro editing software. So in Snapseed's non-destructive workflow, editing stacks enables modifications to all the tools and filters that have been previously applied to an image. You can copy and paste edits from one image to another, you can insert additional tools and filters into the workflow, or you can adjust slider settings or create a mask on a specific edit without having to start over. So let's go ahead and jump into an image that I've already made edits to, and we're going to check out those edit stacks and all the things that we can actually do with those edit stacks. So once you've made edits to a photo inside a Snapseed, you're going to tap up here where you see the red dot. This is your edit stacks. So when I tap that, it's going to pull up all the edits that I have applied to this image. If you tap here in the right hand corner, you can kind of switch the view of it on iPad. I like this view better. So the edits that I made, I used the adjust tool and I adjusted the saturation, the white balance tool. I adjusted the temperature, the crop tool. I did a little crop and then I also did a small rotation. That's why you see two of them and the curves tool. I actually adjusted the exposure and then we have the original image. So I can actually tap on these and it will turn off all of my other edits. So this is the original photo. And then I can tap over here to turn on the curves edit, the initial crop edit, which you'll see is kind of crooked. So then I went back in and fixed it. And then we warmed up the image. And then I increased the saturation of colors to make everything a little more vibrant. Okay. So you can kind of use this to turn your edits on and off to see what changes they made as well. Now with an edit selected, you will notice that I have three little dots in the, the, on the left side. If I hold that down, we have three options. We have an option to edit that specific edit. We have an option to apply a mask, which we'll talk about that in a minute, or we can delete the edit. So if I hit the edit option, it's going to pull it up just like I was initially making that edit. I didn't make any changes to brightness, but if I swipe up, saturation is what I changed and I did a plus eight. So maybe I've, you know, looked at it on a larger screen and I was like, eh, the colors are a little too vibrant. So I can, you know, tone that down a little bit and, and make adjustments to that edit. When I hit that check mark, it's going to take me back to my edit stacks. Let's look at white balance real quick. Same thing. I can adjust the edit. I can apply a mask or I can remove, but if I look at crop and hold it, the only thing I can do is I can just make an edit to that crop. So I wanted to show you that difference. Let's go back to adjust and we're going to go ahead and turn these on here. Let's talk about applying a mask. So a mask is like selectively editing the photo. 
So with adjust, I went ahead and adjust the saturation of the image. Let's go back into edit and let's actually focus on the shadows. So I want to go ahead, I'm going to try to darken this label. So the black and the label, I want to try to darken a little bit. Okay, so if I hold that down, that's what it originally looked out. It's kind of washed out from the light and the reflection. So I want to darken that a little bit. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and apply that shadow edit. But what it did is it applied it to the entire image. So if I click on the three dots and I go to apply mask, what I can do is I can go in and I can brush just the area that I want that edit to be applied to. So if I go in and I brush just the label here, which keep in mind this dot in the right hand corner is going to allow me to see where I've brushed and not. Okay, so I'm just brushing the label because that's the only place I want to apply that edit to. And then we can we can kind of reverse it and see what the edit was and where it wasn't applied. So it allows us to like look at it. And then, and you can also adjust the amount. So if maybe I only want 50% of that edit to be there or 75%, apply just that and hit that check mark. So what that did, if I turn that edit off and back on, look at the difference. On, off. Okay, so it just applied that, actually what it did because it was adjusted, it applied the saturation as well. So really I probably should have had a separate, a separate edit for the saturation because once we did the mask, it essentially applied that edit. So saturation and the shadows, it applied to the label only when we did the mask. So the mask component is, is really, really cool because it can allow you to go in and you could, like, let's see if I have, let me find a different photo here. Let's go ahead and back out. Sure, we'll save a copy. And I'm gonna show you this as well. That's really cool. But let's say, let's see if I have kind of, I don't really have an uneven light source in any of these. Let's go ahead and pick this one. We're going to do the curves. I am going to focus solely on the right hand side of this photo. So I'm going to increase and decrease my darks just for the right side of this photo. So the left side looks a little washed out. The right side is what I'm focusing on. But now I just want to apply that edit to the right side. So I'm going to go to my edit stacks. I'm going to click on the three dots with the curves, apply mask, and I want to do hundred percent of it, but I'm only going to apply it to this side. Okay. The other thing to note is when you zoom in, so the further out you're zoomed, the bigger spread you get in your brush, the tighter you zoom, the harder. Look at the difference in that. Okay. So just keep that in mind, but we're going to create a straight line down here and then we're going to hit a check mark and that was significant, right? So we, you can see the significance in that. So if we go back and hit that apply mask, we may want to just do a 50%, which is zero. We'll go ahead and erase this at a zero. And then actually let's just try 25%. So we're going to go through and just apply 25% of that edit to this image. Hit the check mark and see what that looks like. So that's a lot more realistic to even out the light and lighten up that side and kind of match it to the left. So if you have uneven light, that's kind of a cool way of doing that. So the other benefit to edit stacks and non-destructive editing in Snapseed, so let's back out. We're going to go ahead and save a copy of that. 
So these are the images that we've edited. So I can actually come into Snapseed and I can grab this photo again. And I can still see all of my edits and make adjustments to it. This is something that's new in the 2025 iOS version. Before, it didn't store the images that you had edited in the program. Like you had to export them and save them. So even if I export this image, and I'm going to have a different lesson, lesson on how to properly save, but let's say I create, do save a copy and create a copy with edits you can revert and select that. And then I hit the plus sign to add another image. This is our most recent right here. So we're going to select that and hit the edit stacks up top. It has all the edits there still. So this is the really cool part about non-destructive editing and most softwares do not have this. Once you edit a photo and you export it and save it, you can't make any adjustments to it unless you continue to manipulate the image by uploading it and doing edits again. You can't revert anything. So this allows you to be able to save a photo and then make edits to it in the future without reducing the overall quality of the photo. In video four, I'm going to show you how to resize your product photos for your online shop using Snapseed. See you next time.